fire away. Talk a little more about the running game as far as how the carries were divided up. Was it a hot hand situation? or? Well, we kind of figured we were going to get them all involved in the, in the game. That James was going to start off the lead dog, and we were going to go to Taylor, and then come with Darian as a change of pace, and we were going to run a couple of speed streaks you know, with Tony, and then try to get Brandon in a couple of runs as well. And at the end of the day, you know, I didn't get him exactly the number that I had set in, you know, set for the game. But you know, the fact that you got them all involved, I think that, you know, that that was a good that was a good thing. You came up with a balanced play calling in the first half. Is that looking to the future somewhat because you're going to have to be balanced? Or? No, that's the way I like to call the game. I just felt that at halftime, at halftime with the game 14-7, that we should be physically physically controlling both lines of scrimmage. That's basically what I thought we should be doing. And for the game at the time, I felt that it was too, it was too close for a team that I thought should be physically controlling the line of scrimmage. So offensively, I said, we're going to go ram it down the throat. We're going to get the ball, and we're going to ram it down the throat. I, what did I throw about three or four times in the third quarter? It wasn't very many. It wasn't because I didn't want to throw the ball. It was because you're sending a message to your team. Look at fellas. Okay, let's get going. And you know, they, they answered the call. What were your thoughts on Jake? I think that he had jitters early just the way I anticipated. You know, I, I anticipated him having some early years. They hadn't played in two years, you know, a real game. Um, but I, there was a, you know, we haven't seen those touch passes, like that corner route to Tony and that ball he dropped into Jamey coming off, off our own end zone, you know, that corner route to Jamey. We haven't seen those, you know, not since I've been here, that we had, you know, that, that you know, type of throw be able to be completed. So I think that, you know, I know Jake, he'll be madly disappointed in himself, but, you know, I'm not. I think that it was, you know, that's just a, Nice sound start, something that we could, we could throw on. Can you talk about the difference between Miller and Sims and kind of what you saw from them tonight? Well, they're different style of runners. You know, one's, you know, one's a, is a, a power slashing runner, and the other one is a, is a, a, a shake and bake, you know, you know, a shake and bake type of runner where, you know, he, he's, he's, he's quicker than fast. And they're different, you know, they're different body types and they're different style of runners, but they're both. You know, they both have, have very good ability. Last year, you didn't have a touchdown pass to a wide receiver. You got one today from Justin McKay. How do you continue to, to do that? Well, I thought we had one to Josh Ford, to tell you the truth. You know? <laughs> but, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, it was the first score, and I said, okay, you know, everyone please shut, about it, shut up about it, <laughs> with the wide receivers. So, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, on the touchdown to Justin, I thought he was going to throw the ball in the pot to Tony. I said, just throw it to Justin. Get this over, with. you know. But um, I think it. I think that you won't have to worry about a score. The wide receivers not scoring any touchdowns. I'm not saying because they scored one tonight, and I'm not saying we're going to have 900 touchdown passes. But I think the receivers will be involved in the scoring some touchdowns. Who got the biggest response on the sideline? Was it when Justin caught that touchdown pass, or when Wyman kicked that field goal? I think the field goal. I found it hysterical. And I, as a matter of fact, I'm sitting there with the headset like this. I said, now listen to this crowd when he makes this field goal. It was almost as big as when Pardula kicked the second kickoff out of the end zone. I mean, life's little pleasures. But, you know, you know, as I've been telling you, basically what I've been describing to you is what you, you saw. You know, you saw why we made that, you know, like it was no big deal. And Pardula hit, you know, hit, you know, kicked the ball off well and punted well. And that's basically... You know, that's going to be important as we, as we move on in the season here now. That is not a, a very that's, – that's a very important thing to note coming out of this game one, that, you know, what we were talking about with these two guys, that's what we have. And, you know, that, that 34 as a fun return, he didn't look too bad either. I was going to ask you that. Is that the biggest takeaway from tonight? You got the block punt as well. I mean, special teams as a whole looked very improved. Well, everyone was worried about how this was going to play out. You know, you know, with all the coaches involved and all the special teams, and the only error was a coaching error. Uh, when we had 12 guys on the field, and that was a miscommunication between the special teams and the, and the defensive coaches. So I'll take the blame for that one, but because we talked about that in the locker room after the game. But that's fourth and four. You know, you get in a critical situation. You know, a critical situation. That's you know, that's a first down. You could end up losing for for something like that. So even with the coaches. It gives 
gives us something to learn from because out of all those penalties, that's the one penalty that you could definitely blame you know, strict, strictly on coaches not, uh, not, not being organized there. How do you think that? Were you trying to get a timeout call to prevent that? Well, they sent their punt team out late. So we were keeping our defense on the field. There were a couple times in the fourth quarter we weren't, we weren't taking our defense off the field on fourth down regardless of what they did. Like the one time when I took the penalty on third down, uh, it was going to be fourth down and four, and I took the penalty, the, the chop block or whatever penalty. You say, well, why wouldn't you do it? It's fourth down because they're going to go for it. That's, that's why, you know, there was, they're at the time of the game where they're going to go for it in that situation right there. Then they completed it. 25-yard pass up the sideline, and I looked like a dummy, but that's beside the point. That was the rationale. That was the rationale at the time. You know, so I think that uh, going back to partly in your question, back to the question that Matt just asked, I was, I was very pleased overall with the overall performance of the special team, but I'll have to wait till I see it. That, that'll be my 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock hour tomorrow, so <laughs> that, that's when I'll get to that. Ben Heaney spent a lot of time on the sidelines tonight. Why was that? He was cramping. As a matter of fact, he wouldn't be he would be okay to be one of the people that was speaking if he were injured. You know, so I, I had to find out what it was too. But that being said, I thought Skyler Miles stepped up. You know, and all this, that's the Skyler Miles that I recruited. That's the Skyler Miles that I remember, and they never saw him last year. I mean, so you you didn't even notice Ben Heaney not in the game really, other than the fact that it was 32 and said. That, that's that's a good thing, you know. But uh, Ben just was cramping up, and as you notice, the game went on. There were a bunch of people cramping up, but you know it was it was toasty out there. We've been hydrated for days, but still it was it was toasty. You guys saw a little no huddle. Is that something early in the first quarter you showed that no huddle? Is that something we can see more of? We've been practicing it every single day, you know. And you notice that we did it for extended periods, and then we went in and out, you know. And that's what we've been trying to get to. And the reason why you could do that is the versatility of uh, Tony and Brandon. Because those guys could go in and out of being in the backfield or being detached as receivers. You know, I never had that before. But now you have that. I haven't had that since, to be honest with you, if you're a Chief fan, since I was around Dexter McCluster. That was the last time I've had something like that where you could say, hey, you can put him in the backfield, but now all of a sudden he's a slot receiver. So with those two guys, you know, they could give you an opportunity to do that. You can give some of the guys as they're coming off the field, like exhaling. Finally, is one of the words that they were saying. How long do you let them celebrate this before you turn their focus on the right? Well, they still won't be allowed to go to the bars tonight, in case you're wondering. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, th I told them that they should really enjoy the win and go spend time with their family and friends. I said, but it's just the first step. I said, now, you know, the jury will still be out. You know, it's 31 to 14. Everyone will say, well, that's what you're supposed to do. And now you get an opportunity to take your next step. And I think that I want them to enjoy. It's been a long time since they've won a game here. It's been a year. I want them to enjoy, enjoy themselves tonight. But tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon at noon when treatment opens up and, you know, then, we, then when they lift and run and everything like that and meet the new, it's time to let's get this game behind us and, you know, sit Enjoy the game a little bit, but to get the game behind us, use the mistakes we made to learn off of, and let's start to get ready to get into a normal routine. I like normal structure. I don't like got the weeks off. I didn't like last week. You know, the guys are in school. The natural progression is to play a game on Saturday. All right, so now we're in that. We're in that for the next you know few weeks before we get a bye, and I'll be miserable again. Okay, but until we get to that bye for the next couple weeks, we're in a normal routine. And I think that both coaches and players are creatures of habit, and you know, feel get into a comfort zone when that happens. Coach, you said when you were here with Nate, you're something that you guys did tonight that would frighten Rice necessarily. Is there anything about Rice after you see your team tonight that kind of frightens you as you have to get ready for next week? Well, well, as I watched the game the other day, I was very impressed offensively how they how they took it to Texas A&M. I was very impressed. Now I'm not you know critically evaluating Rice. At I want to save her South Dakota just for an hour, okay. And I would like to enjoy that. But you know, as I watched that game, I was I was I was impressed how they moved the ball uh, in in that game on the road. So I think that you know, hey, look, we have our work cut out for us every week. But what what?
what's number, another thing we got to take care of? And that we got that win. Okay, we end that million game losing streak. Now we're going to go on the road. We haven't won on the road in a while. And next week is it's our first opportunity to go ahead and do that. I think in the spring you said it was key on those ruining practice. Was that how he was doing it? With the interception and the pick six? <laughs> yeah, was he also the one who celebrated or was somebody else? Because I never saw somebody else. It was somebody else. Good, and I think it's out with all the Yeah, yeah that, that'll, 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 that'll go over well tomorrow. Because you know, I didn't see it. No. Uh, I didn't see it, nor did I get an explanation. But that's a, that's okay. You know, but uh, no, I, actually, I taught him those moves. <laughs> you know, he was trying to do, you know, his, his high school compadre clown, and he was trying to do his best clown imitation. That was a big play, you know. Even even we ended up getting penalized 100 yards on the play. It was still, it was still, a, it was a, still a big turnover in the game. Did the nine penalties bother you? Yeah, it just, but the best, not the best part. But if you're going to have it, Tom, have it first, because now you know what I'm going to do. You know how unmerciful I'm going to be on on that film tomorrow. You know, so you now can take those nine penalties and use it as a teaching tool. Remember last year. We weren't any good, okay, but we were, we, but we didn't commit a bunch of penalties, okay. So now, now you get to say, hey, this could cost us the game. This could cost us the game. And you also improve coaching on those penalties when you say that like that, that substitution error right there. You include that in there, okay, as one of the things that could cost that could cost you a game. Charlie, because you have so many newcomers, I mean, are you hoping that you guys have a lot more ceiling? Oh, not I'm hoping we do have a lot more ceiling. There's zero doubt in my mind that we're not we're not close to where we can be. That we have a lot more ceiling. There's, I mean, there's some guys that aren't even playing yet that are, are going to end up being major factors here. I mean, I'll use a guy like uh, Rod Paul, Rodriguez Coleman. I mean, he might end up being one of our best receivers, but right now he's playing behind. You know, you have to you see it the way it is in practice. Okay, and I think at the end of the year he might be he might be one of those guys that everyone's talking about. But right now he's running behind both Christian and Trey. I mean, and I'm just using him as one of those guys that you know you look at him in practice. He has the potential to be the best one. I mean, so you know, just there's a lot of guys like that that you know right now might be second team or third team, but by the end of the year they might be one of the reasons why your team got better. Expect short to be a one week deal. You know. I've already given you, you've already got what you're getting out of me today. <laughs> you should know better than even asking that one, Austin. <laughs> okay, why do I send it up to the press box so you guys already have it? You know, that's what I know. You know what I know. And you, and I've said what I can say. And, and when I know something, I promise you, you will know. Okay, when I know, you'll know. Going back to Justin, how happy was he just to catch his? First touchdown pass after. I don't know who was the happiest. Him, Ionello, Heaps, Gunnard, I mean, Trey, Montel. I mean, I had, I had the whole Bishop the Age contingent. I mean, there were a lot of people. Now the head coach was kind of happy too. In case you're wondering, he wasn't too he wasn't too mad either. But there were there were a whole bunch of people that were pretty happy to get that out of the way. You changed some things around as far as the the coaches being on the field and things of that new, some of the communication. How do you feel that went the first game? Actually, it went pretty smooth. I tried, you know, I was I let the coaches coach more. You noticed, I, you know, I wasn't, you know, I, I I I stayed down by the defense when the defense is on. Let the offensive coaches coach their guys, and you know, I didn't say too much. Every once in a while, I'll say, "What do you got?" Or you know, in the fourth quarter, I wanted to make sure that they understood. That I was, we were going to play four down territory. You know, we were going to play them to play for four downs when it got to three scores. When it got to three scores, I didn't care if they were punting or not. We were going to play. We weren't going to take the defense off the field on fourth down. So I click on and say that. But other than that, I thought that, I thought that you know everything was fine. Now you have to understand that pace that they were running is not the pace that's about that's about ready to hit them. Okay, but. It, it was a good start. Charlie, how much do you want to see Sims leave here with not only his individual success, but also his team success? Um, I think that James is, is typical of a lot of the fourth and fifth year 
players here, okay, that it would be really nice if, if they could leave, leave here. I'm not going to do that. I mean, he's a heck of a player. He, you know, we all know arguably he has a chance to, you know, as he's moving up the charts, to challenge for right up to the top. You know, and if he stays healthy, if he stays healthy, there's there's a chance that ends up happening. But we don't play we don't play for records. You know, the only one record that we're playing for is wins. And uh, I think that I would think he trades yards for wins every day of the week. And he's a very unselfish player. And, and he's the one player at the end of the game came up to me in the locker room and apologized to me for fumbling. He said that just wasn't with me. It was a lack of concentration. It's really nice when a player comes up to you. You don't have to say anything. He came to look you up to apologize for fumbling. That's such a diverse running game, is he going to be able to ex distinguish himself you know, from everybody else with maybe reach those records? Or? I, I just said, I'm not into the records, but I, you won't have to worry about James not being the lead dog because he will be. You know, those, everyone else is complimenting him. He's, he's the number one guy. He's the, num there's, he's the number one guy. Everyone else is complimenting him. What was the mindset of going for it on fourth down which one, the one we made or the one, one we didn't make? Actually, I was trying to draw them off sides. Uh, okay. okay, and it got late in the count, so we threw our, our fourth and six beater that came up fourth and five and a half. So in that case, you worked there. You got to get another half a yard. You know, but you know, I thought it was as quick as we were snapping the ball, but we used a hard cadence and we thought we had a good chance of drawing them off sides. So I had one of two choices, one to play called or ball time. What I was trying to do is get it to fourth and one, to be perfectly honest with you, by getting them to jump off sides. And like I said, now you, you're, you're at the time of the clock where you can run the play. You either run the play call or you call timeout. And I figured I'd just go ahead and let it run. I thought our defense was playing good enough that you know, they would cover for me, which they did. You know, they, would, they would cover for me if we didn't have that number. How would you uh, grade the offensive line in the today? I'll have to wait until I see it. I mean, the only play, I was only mad one time, really. I'm sure I'll be mad plenty of times tomorrow morning. By the way, that's the 5 o'clock hour in the picture of my brain. Okay. But um, I was mad at one play. Uh, there was a timeout on the field. The one play we got sacked, I went in and I said, now listen, if they bring that guy off the corner over here, you, know, you, have to, you guys have to make sure you go out, you, you go out to get him. Because if you do, we'll have ourselves a big play. There was, a miscommunica there was miscommunication amongst the linemen. I know whose fault it is. Not really important that you know. But uh, as a matter of fact, the guy I yelled at, it wasn't really his fault because somebody else had made a call to keep him from going out and blocking the guy. But the problem I have is when I, when I, six, I correctly predict what's going to happen and tell them what's going to happen, and it does happen, and we still don't, we still don't block the play, that doesn't that doesn't get me too excited. But anytime you run for rush for a bunch of yards like that, and, you know, you're usually pretty happy with the run game. And I'm sure the protection looked okay. Not, um, not great, but I'm sure it looked okay. And it'll give you, I want I want there to be enough bad stuff in there so I can yell at it tomorrow. And trust me, I'll, I'll find plenty. Who was the end of Taylor Cox and a buckle going on about the bed for Yeah, I didn't know. You know, hopefully, I'm hoping it's a cramp and not a tweak in his hammy. But you know, you know that that you know it could be either one. And I had talked to Murph at the end. I said, did, did he tweak his hammy or did he cramp? And he goes, I'm not sure yet. Till after they get in there and work on him. So I don't know which one it really ended up being. I'm sure it, even if it was a tweak, he didn't pull it because you can see just by how he's running. If he, if he tweaked it, it would be a slight pull because I couldn't tell from looking at it whether it was a cramp or a pull. When it's a pull. Usually, when it's a distinct pull, usually it, it's glaring. You know, I'm not saying it's not. I just I, I, I just don't know yet until after we get through tonight and tomorrow. I'll find out what we got. Can you talk about uh, the JUCO players that you had that got their first action tonight? I think they're happy to get that game under their belt. To be honest with you, you know, there's been so much talk about the, you know all these different guys and. 
trying to mesh them all together right there. And, you know, I'm sure some of them played good, some of them didn't play good. And, but then at the end of the day, it's nice for him.